My name is Emily Fon Noel Oge of Let Us Farm. So you are welcome to Let Us Farm page. So today, we're going to be doing a topic that keeps many people worried and um, with a various decisions they have to make before stocking. So the topic is, which of tapolin pond, concrete pond, or eating pond is best for stocking your catfish. So this is a situation that I've led many people who don't even have money for doing a certain pond to doing it because they were told that it is the best and it will give you the best grow out. So today we are going to go in details to understand what are the implications of using each of these ponds and how best are they able to rust? So if this is the first time you are seeing me, this is Let Us Farm page. And all we do here is we try to provide practical solutions to all our agri problems. So if you are having any issue in your farm, all you need to do is simply do a two to three minutes video and send to me. Please, when you are doing this video, do it when you are feeding your fishes. So this enables me to see the reactions of your fishes. And that will give you give me a better idea of a solution to your problem. So I have done this for many people and I keep doing it for people. It is a free service. Having said that, be reminded that we are not forming any WhatsApp group. And we are not forming any Instagram, uh, any Telegram group. So whatever we have to teach, we we'll teach you here. And any other channel we do, you see me physical like this, teaching you. Or write ups. So, we don't anybody that asks you for requests for your number or contact for anything that is not let us farm. So, having said back, having said that, we shall be right back to look at these various ponds and look at how best they do our fishes to give us the best results. I'll be right back. <laughs> Right. If you use pond of this nature, but you can see that this pond here will not carry enough. Welcome back. So, like I said at the big opening montage, we like I said, we I have many farmers that I have met, and even many have written me asking me this same question. Some said they were advised that the best pond that gives you the best results is eating pond. So. It even gets to a point that even people who don't have opportunity of having eating pond because they don't have swamp and anything, they want to create an eating pond because of this impression that the eating pond will give you the best result. So we are even told that there is food in the eating pond meant for your fishes to eat. Therefore, eating pond is both cheaper and gives you the best result. Well, everybody has his opinion, but this is the, this is the logic. If you don't know, concrete ponds are ponds made with block, plastered with cement, and water is put inside to raise fish. While tarpaulin ponds are ponds made with tarpaulin, and they are connected with pipes as your discharge and supply put fish inside for success. While the eating ponds are pond dug out of the earth surface, and water is there, fishes are put there. And you get your result. Then we have another pond. We have the tanks, the rubber tanks. Mind you, don't use metal tanks. Metal tanks are not the best because they don't have temperature regulation. In the afternoon, they will get very hot. And at night, they will get extremely cold. So anybody that says you should use it, just leave that one. It's not part of what we're discussing. So having said that, the people's argument about this pond of Eating pond being the best, according to them, they say there are food inside and it, it helps the fishes to quicken up their growth. Now, let me tell you one thing the eating pond will not make your fishes to grow better than anyone on concrete pond or tarpaulin pond. There are reasons why this occurs. First of all, most people are more likely to overstock using tarpaulin pond and concrete pond. The reason is this. Sometimes when you are building this pond, you look at the pond, you underestimate what will be in the pond because to you, the pond, it looks very big. So you overput your fishes. 
and now this pond doesn't have any extra layer for your fishes but unlike the etin pond most times when you overstock your etin pond you still have a little advantage because the fishes can actually go down to the mud and settle so sometimes that accommodates a little more than what the etin pond and the tapolin pond will accommodate but that doesn't necessarily mean that it will make them to grow very well no now the issue of food inside the pond like i've done a video on this all those theories are just classroom theories for instance then if you stock your fish inside an eating pond if there were food there before you stock them immediately they enter that pond they eat up the food the food will not come out again meaning that they just ate the food once it's finished so they become like other pots i don't know whether i will get this logic for instance if they were living organisms so we tell you that there are zoonotic planktonics eating worms and all these things inside an eating pond and this forms part of the food that the fish will eat until you crop them this particular theory is just a classroom teaching to people who learn fishery in the class but in reality it is not real why is it not real once the fish is introduced inside this pond they eat up whatever is in the pond and when they eat it off remember they are living inside this pond so every day they go to those sites to look at is there any other thing to eat meaning that those things will never grow again the living things inside the pond they will not reproduce again because the fishes are always there to eat them so meaning that it's once that they eat it and the thing won't come back and what you eat once will not give you a result for somebody going for like 10 12 months so it's it, that theory like i said is just what you are told in the school but in reality it is a total different something now unlike the etin pond the tapolin pond and the concrete pond they are surface pond so when you stock you stock with nothing just the fish and the water and the pond that you've treated and you start treating now the logic about what gives you the best in these three ponds is getting it right if you are able to stock to the normal pond density of each of this pond you put what they are supposed to take in each of the ponds your result will now be determined by how do you manage this thing that you put inside for instance now a pond that is supposed to take 1000 you now stock the 1000 and then the, you, you have food to feed these fishes very well change their water very well that is what gives you the result and not because it is an eating pond that will give you this result if you overstock an eating pond there is no magic there is nothing like oh you hope the hope will not come to reality it will not be fruitful that they will give you no result in fact there are many people that have eating pond that come out without any result at the end of the day simply because of this notion that they believe that their fishes will have something to eat inside the pond they are they, they once they stock the fish they just feed them twice they just abandon the whole thing they don't feed again and they hope that somehow a miracle will happen there is nothing there it's a practical something the fishes will not see what to eat and they will not grow and develop well so automatically you have wasted your time so what actually differentiates the growth rate of each of these pond is your management techniques in the pond so once you are able to manage what you put inside the pond then you will get the best result from any of these three ponds so and this management happens to do with what did you stock inside this pond that is your stocking density in each of these ponds then how do you feed what you stocked inside this pond then how do you change the water people some people don't even know that in etin pond you change water but you change water in etin pond and this gives you the best result for somebody who doesn't change water now there are advantages of each of these pond that makes them unique and makes people think that this is the best for instance, one of the reasons why the etin pond looks like the best is that the etin pond makes a farmer lazy. What do I mean by this? Because the etin pond has a natural recycle system. So it makes it that you don't always change water in etin pond, unlike your concrete pond and your tapolin pond. So in etin pond, you don't always change water. So, you know, we have two types of, major two types of etin pond. We have these ones that are on a swampy level. So when they are on a swampy level, you discover that the rate of water coming from under 
actually filters the pond for you and you don't even need to look for a place to top up your water if it is during dry season that the water level goes down. This one will never go down. So once in a month, if you just pump out the water, the water comes back on its own. So in that particular pond, you see, you don't, you don't, you, there's no input. But there is this ethane pond that it does, it doesn't recycle your 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 waste inside the pond like that. Simply because it's not a, it's on a swampy place, so that place doesn't have the ability of water to come up as regular as it comes up in this swampy place. So in that one, during dry season, you will need to pump in water to sustain the fishes. So increase the water level in this pond so that the fishes will be very very okay. If you don't do it, those fishes will be dying. It happens during dry season, so you need to pump in water. And in some some cases now in this pond, anytime you notice that the water is dirty. What you need to do is to pump out the water and pump in the water and pump in another clean, fresh water. But unlike the pump, uh, the concrete pond and the tarpaulin pond, in these two types of pond and the rubber tank pump pond, in, in these three types of pond now, the difference is that in these ponds, you will need to regularly change water. For instance, now, depending on the size of your pond and the stock in the pond, you may have to be changing water two to three times per week. But unlike the ethane pond, you change water once in a month. So these are the certain differences that make people you know to choose that, okay, this one will. But the issue is that the reasons why people go for concrete pond and tarpaulin pond is a situation of movement and where you are, opportunity. If you're staying in a place that is totally very dry, there's no way ethane pond will work there. So you need to go for your concrete pond or your tarpaulin pond. Then if you're a tenant in someone's house, there's no way your concrete pond will work there. So you need to go for a tarpaulin pond because a tarpaulin pond is a movable pond. So it's a pond that any day you can move out of the place, you fold your pond and go. So each of these ponds have their own different advantages and disadvantages. Same thing with a rubber tank pond. If you're a tenant, you can put a rubber tank pond in front of your balcony and do your fishing there. So anytime you want to leave such house, you just discharge the water and carry your pond and leave. So in such kind of scenario, you cannot bring in the ethane pond. You cannot bring in the concrete pond. Then in concrete pond, if it is your personal house, you can decide to build a, a concrete pond. Because the truth is that the concrete pond will outlast the tarpaulin pond. But the tarpaulin pond will be movable and the concrete pond will not be movable. So all these ponds, they have their own advantages and disadvantages. And if you are, like I said, if you want to go for your ethane pond, it must be in a place that is swampy, a place that can hold water so that when you put your fishes inside, you will not come overnight and your water is dried. So all these things are their own advantages, advantages. But in between the three of them, there is none that is the best. Personally, I have used all form of these ponds. I have used... I have used the rubber tank pond, I have used the tarpaulin pond, I have used the concrete pond, and I'm using an ethane pond now. In fact, most of the times I do my brood out from either concrete pond or a tarpaulin pond before transfer. But sometimes I do direct pond, uh, direct raising in this pond. So I have used all of them, and what I told you now is the plain truth about each of these ponds. So don't because you don't have opportunity of looking for ethane pond believe that you cannot do fish farming that is not correct if you really want to do fish farming all you need to do is to get your arts right make sure that you have enough water supply then your your situation will decide which type of pond that you will use then every other thing you want to see is on this page once you subscribe to this channel ask me any question you need on how to start your fish farming and i'm ready to tell you and i'm going to do a series on how best to start a fish farming until i come your way next time my name is emily from Oge of Leros farm is there anything i have said you don't understand kindly use the comment section and is there any topic you want me to discuss kindly use the comment section like i always say keep farming it's a work life hey y'all come look at this